Okay, welcome everybody to our first LSA webinar of the year, I think, unless there's one that's happened that I don't know about. Um, SEO and beyond, what local marketers must know, need to know in 2018, and I'm very excited to be joined by Mike Blumenthal and David Mim, who are luminaries and very thoughtful people to boot about all these issues, and we're going to go through a wide range of topics that pertain to the local space, small business marketing, uh, you know, social media products, search products, and um, the way this this is going to go is that I'm going to I'm going to do a very short intro, then I'm going to turn it over to David and then Mike, and then we're going to have a kind of lightning round uh, where they react to some of the LSA predictions. If uh, if you have seen that, if you haven't, uh, the the document is available to download off of our site. They're going to each offer their own thoughts and predictions, and then they're going to react to some of the LSA third-party uh, predictions. Um, but before we get into that, I have to give you the shameless plugs. LSA, which is a great and growing, interesting organization with a patchwork quilt of stuff, as this visually suggests, going on. Um, you can see all our past webinars, uh, access them through the, uh, the homepage, and there'll be a replay of this webinar available in, a, in about 48 hours. Um, the uh, Next event we've got coming up is our annual conference, which is going to happen in Chicago. This is a great event. Uh, it's a really diverse uh, attendee list, brands, technology companies, agencies, um, local media publishers, and we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Here's a kind of a sample of some of the things that we're going to be talking about, SEO topics, uh, voice search and virtual assistants, the local SERP, the future of the small business websites, how do you prove ROI to small businesses these days multi-location and brand to local issues, um, the future of retail. It's a, it's a really uh, broad agenda with a lot of interesting folks and um, well worth your time and money, I might add, and your money, of course. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, hopefully uh, you will be there. And with that, I, I want to turn it over to David. But you guys are able to submit questions at any point, and we'll have some time at the end for questions. And that always is one of the more interesting parts of these webinars. So um, this is, think of this as a kind of ask me anything for David and, and, and Mike um, after they get, get, to, uh, get, to get through their slides and we talk about uh, the uh, LSA prediction. So a lot of words from me. Now over to David Mim. Thanks, Greg. Uh, great to be with you. And, and uh, thanks to the LSA for, for hosting this webinar. Uh, Mike and I are longtime friends, so uh, I think uh, we should get some pretty good conversation going and, and looking forward to hearing questions from the audience as well uh, at the end. So I'll kind of dive into my predictions. You can see the URL. Uh, I posted these in, I think, early December of 2017. Um, haven't seen much to dissuade me from any of them yet, uh, so uh, we'll kind of dive on in. Uh, the first one is ads and knowledge panels. So uh, this is basically my prediction for uh, what we're going to see in the local SERP in 2018. Um, we've kind of, you know, it's, it's uh, not necessarily a, a controversial prediction, I don't think. Um, I know a number of, of other search experts kind of share uh, this view, especially in local, but, um, you know, Google's monetizing more and more real estate. Uh, and on top of that, the organic real estate is, is moving from website results to uh, structured information in the form of knowledge panels and, and featured snippets. So uh, the key, the key kind of takeaway here, I think, was probably that if you're not doing some form of paid search currently uh, in local, you probably will need to start in 2018 uh, to make sure that your, your clients are still getting the same number of, of traffic and leads from Google. Uh, and then the second takeaway is because there's so many knowledge panels and, and structured information, uh, appearing that your your click-throughs to your website are probably going to decline, and that's that's not necessarily a uh, an indictment of your uh, SEO campaign, but it's it's really important to keep that in mind that that's just a shift in the way Google is presenting results. Uh, so that's kind of an important trend I think to to be aware of. Uh, one of the ways I think Google will monetize the SERP uh, even more and and make it more structured is to roll out uh, this reserve with Google plan in more and more industries. So. We saw Google do this in uh, in 2017 with uh, the fit, especially in the fitness and and sort of spa uh, categories. They they've got partnerships with MindBody and and others uh, where you can basically make appointments directly from a, a local business's knowledge panel. Uh, and so I see that you know Google is going to be facilitating more and more transactions through the local SERP, 
uh, in 2018, and, and um, this also gives them some way to monetize uh, voice searches as well once, uh, once those searches really pick up in, in volume. So Google's basically... Just add, though, that these aren't monetized at this these point. Are not, these are not monetized yet, but I think it, it signals how they're going to monetize voice in terms of taking a cut of a, of a transaction rather than um, necessarily promoting certain businesses through voice. So I think that's it for that prediction, Greg, if we could get the next slide. Uh, the next one, Mike may actually disagree with me on this, which he'll let me know about, I'm sure. Uh, but I think Google My Business will will slow down a little bit this year in terms of rolling out new features. I think uh, they've, they put up a lot, of, um, a lot of releases in 2017, that uh, many of which have been really well received and, and are getting significant adoption. Uh, and I think 2018 might be more about tying some of these pieces together. For example, uh, Mike, I think we've already seen this, that posts are now part of, of the Google Sites product. Uh, right. And so I see, I see these things, you know, sites, reserve, posts, uh, you, uh, local service ads, which I'm sure we'll talk about, all kind of tying in much more tightly into uh, the GMB suite of products, as opposed to seeing additional new features coming out uh, in 2018. Next one, Maps becomes a new frontier of monetization for Google. So, uh, you know, Google is, is uh, judged as a public company on, on how much their revenue grows. I think that they've largely uh, maxed out a lot, a lot of real estate already on uh, desktop and, and mobile searches. And so I think Maps might be uh, an area they'll seek to monetize a little bit more. Uh, interestingly, we saw Andy Taylor from Merkel publish uh, an analysis that, that his company did, uh, I think it was early January, it was after the, after the turn of the year, um, where uh, something like 15% of, of paid clicks uh, for their clients during the holiday sort of shopping season went to driving directions uh, as opposed to going to a website. And so I think that that signals, you know, one way that Google might uh, start to monetize a little bit more is, is showing more sort of driving directions and, and click to call type of ads within Maps uh, moving forward. Next one may be a little bit optimistic, uh, but I, I do think we'll see Google fighting back against fake reviews a little bit this year. Um, you know, the, the current filter, Mike, has been at the front of the line in terms of, of identifying uh, just how poor it is at, at sussing out fake reviews. Uh, you know, single reviewers leaving hundreds of reviews for coffee shops uh, all over the country within a span of minutes. Uh, among others. And so I think Google will, will finally be forced to, to track some of these guys down and, and shut them out. Um, reviews are becoming a much more important uh, piece of the ranking algorithm. We've, we've seen in, um, in local SEO guides uh, a study from a couple of months ago, reviews are really the main factor of, in terms of local criteria uh, as opposed to organic criteria that Google's using to influence rankings. So they're going to have to do something to fight back against fake reviews if, if that continues to be the case. Uh, my next prediction, uh, I'm a huge Twitter fan and, and very avid Twitter user, so it, it uh, pains me to some extent to, to make it, but I think Twitter's promote mode product uh, will not succeed. It will be a complete and utter failure, in fact. Um, it's just not a, it, it doesn't solve a problem that a lot of SMBs have, which is, uh, you know, gaining more Twitter followers. I'm not sure that's at the top of anybody's uh, list as a small business in terms of what they want their marketing dollars to do. And the targeting on it is really, really poor. So you can't even, uh, you, your, your segmentation is basically by interest. Um, and Buffer actually did a, a pretty good uh, case study on their experience with the product uh, last week, uh, where they basically, it's a $99 a month product. They gained 30 followers uh, through it over the course of the month. And there are much better services that'll get you followers for, uh, more targeted followers for cheaper than $3 uh, per. Next uh, prediction, Facebook discontinues uh, messenger ads, broadcast messenger ads anyway, by the end of 2018. Uh, you know, these are really just starting to roll out, and I think that uh, they're going to find with their research that people really hate them. Uh, messenger is a little bit more intimate um, uh, sort of channel uh, than, than the Facebook news feed, and I think in terms of increasing uh, monetization, Facebook's much more likely to go in the direction of Instagram. Uh, which is still a great opportunity for organic visibility for brands. Uh, I think Facebook will start to monetize Instagram much more heavily as opposed to uh, monetizing through Messenger through ads. I do think they're going to focus very heavily on Messenger adoption by small businesses, but uh, in terms of an ad vehicle, I'm not sure it's the right play. 
Next one, Amazon maintains at least a 40-point voice device lead over Google. Uh, so uh, Mike and I definitely differ on this, uh, on this uh, strategy, I guess, or the importance of this strategy. I see that um, Amazon's ability to get Alexa and, and Echoes in the home uh, is really, really key. Uh, I think more important than the quality of the results at this point. Um, and I think that the sort of public awareness of Echo uh, at least meets or exceeds uh, the, that of Google Home so far. Um, we're seeing, if you're a football fan, we've seen basically every commercial break is a battle between Google and Amazon uh, over home devices. And I think Amazon is at least, um, at least uh, maintaining their current position uh, in 2018 based on uh, how much money both companies are spending to market their products. Uh, on top of that, I see Amazon making a major uh, small business push. They're consistently one of the top rated uh, uh, providers on Alignable's NPS survey. Uh, a lot of small businesses are already buying through Amazon, and I think uh, voice as a channel and, and search as a channel uh, are going to open up a few more opportunities for small businesses to become Amazon uh, advertisers or, or uh, sales, uh, se selling through Amazon. So I think Amazon will, will make a really concerted effort uh, in 2018, I think the, the companies that Amazon is displacing primarily right now are big box retailers that sell commodity type products. Uh, so I think if you're a small business in, an, in a niche market, uh, right now Amazon represents a pretty good opportunity for you uh, to potentially get more customers. And sort of on a related note, I think Etsy will start to make a, a few more positive headlines this year. I know that there, uh, there were a few st stories that came out at the end of 2017 uh, about, you know, company culture being a problem and, uh, you know, the fact that they they're seem to sort of be stagnating, at least from the outside. Um, I think they'll either acquire a company uh, to build out their suite of, of uh, tools that allow merchants to create their own online stores uh, off of Etsy, um, or they get acquired by someone or they do a big partnership with someone. I think that they have a an audience of, of small business owners that uh, is outside of what's traditionally defined by a lot of these uh, industry surveys. Uh, they're sort of hobbyists or, or part-time small business owners. Um, and so I think it, it, the fact that that's a channel that n no one else really has uh, significant access to, I think Etsy is kind of the leader in that, in that space. And I think that makes them an attractive partner or, or uh, target of acquisition. And then the last one, uh, I think the last one anyway, um, you know, I, Yelp came out with a, a doubling down or a tripling down on their uh, review solicitation policy uh, at the end of end of last year, uh, essentially trying to convince businesses not to ask for reviews on any site on the web, uh, not just Yelp. Uh, I think it's a terrible policy. It makes no sense from a, a best practices uh, business standpoint. Uh, businesses have been asking their customers for feedback and referrals, uh, you know, for time immemorial. Um, so Yelp is really fighting a, a losing battle there. Uh, it just makes their customers hate them even more. They continually rank at the bottom of Alignable's NPS uh, surveys. And I think that the, the market forces that are moving this year with Google and Facebook, uh, you know, basically monetizing more real estate, uh, capturing more searches for themselves, uh, I think that's a, that's a big problem for Yelp's uh, sort of consumer eyeballs. And Mike, I think, is going to talk about some data on the business side um, that suggests, you know, they may be losing the reviews battle as well. So. Uh, I think Yelp is, is in a really tough spot, uh, and I'm not sure that their current policy of, of making their own customers hate them is, is the best way to go. Okay, so before we go to Mike, thank you very much, David. This is where you can contact him and follow him on Twitter. Um, before we go to Mike, I'm getting some questions about whether the, um, the uh, webinar is going to be archived. Yes, it is, so everybody will get to see the full, full webinar, uh, replay it in its entirety. Uh, when it when it posts to our site. So, um, Mike, your turn. Sure. So, opinions have an asterisk because opinions. These, you know, I, I am not as optimistic about my ability to predict the future as David is. That might be a function of our age difference. I sort of view opinions like a holes. Everybody's got one. They all stink. Mine as much as the next guy. Uh, I know. So, anyways, with that in mind. All things here are said with uh, take with a grain of salt. Um, 2017 was an amazing year for Google and local. 
for the first time ever, we've seen this huge corporate embrace of local. Instead of local being a pawn in the Google Plus game or the Maps Wars or the IP Wars, local took on a life of its own, huge corporate investments in terms of new products. Google will defend that at all costs, all comers, top to bottom. I mean, they're going after the hows and the thumbtacks as much as they're going after the Facebooks and the Amazons. So I just see Google continuing to invest. I see that uh, their rate of product introduction, exactly what that means, I don't know. It's hard for me to envision how many more they can have. But my sense is, at least in talking to them, that they have an aggressive lineup planned. I do agree with David that we will see more integration between these products. Um, but I see them as rolling out new products, but not just not every product that Google rolls out is done with monetization. A lot of their products are done in an effort to attract businesses into the, into the GMB um, and for the data reasons, but also to upsell them. And I think they will continue. Like last year, I think six out of eight of their major updates were free. I think that will stay the same. I don't see the monetizing reserve short haul um, or even long haul. I see that they will continue this strategy. The, one of the products that we released last year as a crowdsourced product, we are seeing tremendously greater uptake than I anticipated. At Get By Stars, I spent the last three months heads down building a tool to monitor this. As part of that, I did a bunch of analysis. Um, and what we saw was 25% of all locations currently have a question uh, attached to their local listing. Many of those with an upvote show on the knowledge panel. In brands, this is like large uh, Walmarts, Targets, Home Depots, we are seeing crazy uptake. 90% of all locations have these questions. And somewhere in the order of 15% of those questions uh, would, if the business knew about them and reported them, will be taken down. I saw a great question uh, that was taken down. Which aisle doesn't smell like a fart? And I saw many worse than that But uh, for Walmart. So I see, I see this as huge brand hazard. I think brands will hate it once they realize it's happening. Uh, and I think small businesses are going to be uncomfortable with it. It's like reviews, user-generated content, they're going to have to get used to it. Um, last year with the rollout of local services, they no longer, it's not even local services ads, Google changed the name from home services ads to local services. A lot of reasons for that, but I think uh, uh, I think the idea that Andrew Shotland put forward the other day about Google wanting to become the local brand of choice, where they almost disintermediate local brands through guarantees, uh, I think is a huge play for them. I agree with David that this will be expanded beyond uh, plumbers and electricians. The past year was mainly a way for them to deal with, to monetize spammy industries, but in doing so and in investing in these, They've developed a huge knowledge about which local vendors are reputable, and I think they will extend that to other areas. Um, even though these are fixed priced, oftentimes a quote will be given to three people, so these are often more profitable than an ad for Google. And I see this as a huge growth area for them. And as part of that, what Andrew Shotland called Gooberizing, where they're basically minimizing the local brand value by adding their brand as the guarantor in this. See, I also see Google is getting into, in the United States, they're currently doing this in Europe, but I see this going worldwide as inserting themselves in vacation rentals and single housing rentals more aggressively as a growth area. And this is an area that they're going to monetize. So not only uh, are they going after house and thumbtack in service ads, they're going after Airbnb in, and our VRBO in, in vacation rentals. I don't see voice breaking out this year, nor do I see uh, bots breaking out this year. I see they both, uh, I think voice, one of the big impediments to voice breaking out, at least in a marketing sense, is that Apple, I read just last week that Apple had 500 million active voice users last month. And Apple doesn't have that much interest in local advertising or local marketing. And I think this is going to create a barrier 
to uptake of voice, at least short haul, um, in in local marketing. So I don't see it as a player this coming year or the year after even, maybe. And I think David agrees it's sometime in the 20s, but we don't know when. Um, I do believe messaging, not necessarily with bots, will take off. And this is an area where Google might introduce a new product. I have no idea. One of, I mean, uh, Facebook, Google, uh, WhatsApp, WhatsApp, all have messaging tools for small businesses. Apple, we know, has one in development. They announced it last year at their developers conference. Um, I think one of these companies will create a platform that allows a small business to manage all of these. I think the, the issue isn't uh, having them and using them, it's how do you manage them. And I think the management of them will, has to take off before bots can take off. So I see messaging as a first step for a uh, small business driven into some back end where they can be managed. As David pointed out, he sees headwinds against Yelp. Uh, I see similar headwinds. Uh, Review Trackers just published. I saw a, a research project. I know Bright Local has published something similar. We're seeing this at getfivestars.com where I, we did an analysis of review per location per month over the course of the last 12 months. And what we saw was Facebook moved from one review per location to 1.2 per location. TripAdvisor moved from two to three and a half. Um, Google moved from one to five. And Yelp moved from one to one. They didn't actually gain any on a per location basis. Simultaneously, I traveled to Europe with my millennial daughter where Yelp has no presence and we both became used to using Google. When she got home, she said to me, gee, you know, I used to be a huge Yelp fan, but I can see where Google offers a lot in the restaurant business. The other night I did something similar where I needed a restaurant that took reservations within a walk of the concert hall, piece of cake on Google. I see Yelp losing ground both with their primary market, I see them losing ground on the data front with review acquisition, and I see them losing ground on functionality. And when you couple that with the heavy-handed plays they've had, both to large and small customers, um, I don't, you know, I see them as continuing to become less relevant. And then review integrity. I think it will be an issue both on a legal front. Obviously, I look at a lot of reviews and of the ways people ask for reviews. I think that the state and federal authorities will get more involved. Over the past year, as David pointed out, I've uh, done a lot of work on fake review networks at Google. Newspapers became very interested in this. I think that's going to raise consumer understanding of it. But I think it's going to have to float all the way down. It has to float all the way up to Google in terms of improving their filtering. And I am well, I think they are working on it, and I'm not sure they put the priority on it that we need. And I also am not sure that artificial intelligence is granular enough. I think it needs people. But I think it needs to float down, and I think it will float down to the small business as well. I think there's a number of shady practices at the small business level and location level that have to be resolved both through perhaps uh, regulatory oversight, Google oversight, as well as companies like Get Five Stars. So I see that as happening. And I'll turn it back over to you, Greg. Okay, excellent discussion. We've got a whole bunch of questions. We're not quite ready to go to questions yet, but keep them coming in, um, and we'll get to as many of them. Either questions in my panel. I think there's a setting that needs to be changed in the uh, setup, but it's not a big deal. Just pointing it out. Go ahead. I will. I, I will read. I will read the questions to you, Mike. I will okay. read the questions. To so you. I have, you, have you trust read. that you're reading them accurately and faithfully. Pre I guess I have precisely, that. precisely. Sorry. All right. Um, so we're 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 before we get to questions, we're going to go through a lightning round. These are statements that represent predictions that the LSA extended member audience has made. We got over. Uh, 75 predictions this year. We published about 60 of them in a document, which again, you can get for free on our site. Just go to the LSA.org and you can find the document and download it. We can also put it into the uh, the uh, the email, which will uh, go out notifying you of the replay of this. So what we're going to do now is just go through these quickly. I've selected a few of these 
and um, you know, agree, disagree, maybe one short comment. Um, and these are complementary to what you just heard largely. So the first one, uh, emphasis on organic search rankings decline as ads dominate the SERPs. You both talked about this. Um, thoughts on this quickly. Absolutely. I mean, it's not so much that emphasis will decline, but mind share of the consumer will decline, particularly in mobile. Um, value will decline. ROI will decline. Agreed. Uh, and I guess I would say uh, with a slight caveat that the companies and the businesses that win at in this case, organic search, I'll say local organic search, right? The companies that show up for these structured data knowledge results, they're going to win even more uh, because these results are going to show up at the top. It's the, it's the companies that have been relying on click-throughs to their websites uh, from traditional organic web results, I think, that are really going to suffer um, moving forward. Okay, second one, um, sustained volatil volatility in local search results. I, 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 don't, I disagree with the premise of the question. I, the, the issue is that Google has so focused on proximity in local search results. There was a great study by Casey Mraz the other day that showed basically that as you move through the zip code of a given environment, no one company showed up in more than one or two zip codes, and they were completely dispersed over the geographic area. Certainly that will continue. That's not volatility. That's just they built it that way for a reason. And so I, I don't see that as volatility. I see it as misunderstanding about how local search is ranked. It's pr proximity and personalization. Yes, exactly. David, but that's not volatility. That's just intention. Yeah, and I would David say, yeah, I would say I, I agree generally with what Mike said. Uh, I would also add that um, I think that the the algorithm is getting harder to discern uh, exactly why a given business is ranking. So um, if you take into account, sure, proximity and personalization. Uh, I also think that engagement with a business, uh, you know, I think Google's almost certainly using uh, real world data about, you know, whether or not people, customers on Android phones and who have location services enabled on iOS are actually showing up at a business. Um, so there's all these factors I think are going to be really hard to know why somebody is outranking somebody else, uh, which could be I guess perceived as volatility, I just think it's more uh, sophistication would be the, the word that I would use. Right. It's our lack of understanding, exactly. Right. right. Okay, monetization of local packs beyond Absolutely. home services. Absolutely. 100% agree. Uh, I think, you know, I think categories like legal uh, could be a good area for Google to expand into with local service ads. Uh, you know, as Mike said, they actually enable Google to monetize uh, monetize fewer pixels uh, more heavily um, and legal is some of the are some of the most expensive AdWords so I think it could be a good option in legal it's also one of the most spammy categories uh, that's just just one a, oops, sorry David no, and just I'm, a note on this that Google will like they they will produce vertical specific monetization strategies in other words in home services it's that panel across the top in VRBO competition, it's the hotel finder. Uh, we've seen this in the past, some of the things that were discontinued with insurance quotes, car quotes. I think that they're looking for vert vertical level monetization. And so it'll be a little different in every category, exactly how they deliver. So we've got a, we've got a question on the healthcare vertical, so this seems like an appropriate time just to, to weigh in on that. Um, the question is, is, is Google ignoring the healthcare vertical? It's a particularly messy vertical, both due to the data, and Google hasn't really wrap, been able to wrap their head around the data in, in the medical vertical, and David and I can attest from painful personal experience. Um, and so given the, the, the lack of clean data, it's not so much that they ignored it, I just don't think they have a, a pathway. I think their original pathway of medical records has proven to, to be not a good pathway for them. And so now I'm not sure what, it's not that they're ignoring it. I just don't know where they're going to go with it. Agree with Mike. Uh, I don't think they're. I don't think they're necessarily ignoring it, but it's it's a really hard problem to figure out, and there are probably easier and uh, more lucrative ones that they can start with. Okay, Google, which has been investing a great deal in offline at attribution, um, they're moving beyond uh, traditional online KPIs and metrics, click models. Uh, to other measures of ROI. Thoughts on that? 
Well, I would love to see it in local for the small business. I mean, currently, it's the local models are, of web attribution are very weak from Google. So that's an area where I would love to see it. Don't know if we will or not. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with Mike. It's still a couple years away, but I think, um, you know, as I've been saying for the last five or six years, that Google Plus was a, a failure as a, as a social network, but a massive success as a Trojan horse to get everybody logged into every device at all times. And so I think that Google is capturing a lot more data about uh, not just search behavior, but, you know, email and, and social and YouTube and all these things they can now pull into a, a single unified view of a customer. So the ability for them to, to know that a customer is, is visiting a store, uh, they've already done deals with credit card companies to know something like 70% of all purchases in the United States uh, via credit card. So, um, you know, unless there's a major shift in privacy regulation, I think that they will get there, uh, but it's probably going to be a couple years before they do. My understanding is that it's a, partly a scale issue, um, and it's also a location accuracy issue, which Google has made enormous strides on. So, you know, a small store tell, determining that somebody's actually, in fact, in that store, and then having enough visitors to, to kind of extrapolate some, you know, some ROI visitation rate back to an ad or some other without exposing folks. without exposing the individuals right yep yeah yep. so related a related prediction cost per visit becomes uh, a, a new sort of standard that would be on the advertising side the, the cost per visit already exists in a couple of cases uh, ground truth is doing one um, I believe that uh, retail uh, has done a version of this, and there was one. There were one or two others that introduced this, um, apparently to great fanfare among retailers and brands who like the idea very much. Pay for a customer, pay for a visit, not a click or an impression. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Well, we're seeing this to some extent. I mean, in in home service ads, you pay per quote, so it's pre-sale but closer to the sale. In in look. AdWords Express, you're paying for the phone call, the driving direction. So I think, and those are both on the very small size of this, small scale size end of this. Um, so I think cost per visit is certainly, I can understand why retailers want it. I can see Google moving there more slowly because um, it, of all the issues you mentioned in terms of their metrics and the accuracy of their metrics. Yeah, I can't really add anything to that. I think it makes sense in retail, but, um, you know, there's a huge swath of service categories, and there are also, uh, you know, uh, sort of hybrid commerce companies that do uh, local businesses, even not, not just brands that do, you know, a ton of e-commerce as well as in-store. You know, think of somebody like a Warby Parker where basically everything you get is shipped, uh, not purchased in store. So I think that there's plenty of uh, there's there's a lot of sort of nuance in terms of what an advertiser wants to pay for, and um, for retailers that are you know that are heavy on the brick and mortar sales, yeah, Google's going to move in that direction, but it's only going to be in certain categories. Well, I, I would I, I think what the discussion suggests is that there's going to be a variety of metrics closer to a sale that may be vertically specific, you know, uh, request for quote, a call, a map lookup. And so we'll see a, a, a diversity or a variety of metrics that are that move beyond sort of the standard online uh, metrics that'll be used on a, you know, in, in different industries. I think that's where we're headed. I would agree with. Yeah, I would agree with it too. And in fact, we've I've, at Local U, we've had ongoing discussions about how agencies and businesses need to identify those metrics now and start me putting them in place and measuring them more accurately because likes and page views are meaningless from where I sit. Okay, Instagram becomes the most valuable social platform this year. Thoughts on that? I am an idiot savant and I don't play on Instagram, so I'm going to turn it over to David. Well, I would say define most valuable. Um, you know, is it by, by some weird financial metric about the number of daily active users or something like that? Uh, I wouldn't know. You know, I'm not a financial expert. I do think Instagram is already the best organic social platform for most small businesses to be playing on. Uh, organic visibility is still pretty high on Instagram. Uh, and I think Facebook will, will start to meter that and start to monetize Instagram more heavily this year. But uh, I do think it's in terms of 
where a business should be spending its time, uh, I would say Instagram is a much better place for, much better outlet for that than Facebook right now. Okay, Facebook becomes the second largest local search player this year. So, again, question of definitions. Facebook may be the second largest local search player now, maybe the first with things like communities. The problem is it's occurring peer-to-peer -peer and it's not easily monetizable. The question is whether they will figure out a way. There's no way a business can go into those communities easily and share their wares or pitch their wares. I mean, you have to be, it's really a delicate thing. And so the question is whether Facebook will figure out a way from where I sit as to, to create a monetizable local strategy that marketers want to engage in. Um, and again, and while their ads are currently really well done, you know, very focused and demographically done, but they're still, at least on client acquisition side, it, being second biggest, they are second biggest now, it just doesn't still make them very big. Yep, I agree with Mike. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm a little skeptical that the Facebook local app, although I think it's a really good app, uh, I don't know that that's going to make as big a dent as some people think. Um, but Facebook's a really important place. Uh, it's already, Mike, you would know better than I, but it's either one or one A in terms of where consumers prefer to leave reviews. Um, so I think it's... it's last, the last time I checked, it was just, it was behind Google, but... Behind Google. It, wasn't, so, it was ahead of the Yelp. So that, right, that certainly speaks to Facebook already is the second second most important local player if that's where your consumers are leaving reviews uh, already, so. Voice assistants drive the next evolution. Um, certainly that's, uh, I think, accurate in terms of the focus on featured snippets now and the so-called zero position. Maybe structured markup is, is being emphasized even more, but, but any thoughts on this? I mean, if we're talking 2018, I think, that, I mean, I think there'll still continue to be a lot of hype about it, but the year of voice assistance is still off a little bit in terms of, you know, significant impact. I think it'll continue to be exciting and interesting and capture mind share. I just don't know if it'll drive a lot of business in the SMB market in the next year. And I guess I would say that... Um I don't, I don't know that anybody thinks of it this way, and I don't know that I even think of it this way, but uh, I think transactional search uh, will actually be um, sort of the next hot thing, uh, whether that's the reserve with Google uh, option, whether that's the local service ads, but the ability to uh, conduct a search and, and facilitate a transaction regardless of platform, mobile, desktop, or voice, uh, I think will be sort of the, the big uh, shift in, in consumer behavior. Um, and I, I agree with Mike, although I'm more bullish on voice that uh, in terms of adoption, um, this may not be the year, but I think 2019, 2020 will definitely st start seeing these kinds of transactions happen with more frequency, more frequency on voice. Right, but, but like you pointed out, there needs to be a transactional uh, leap before there can be an assistant leap. And yeah. we're still in the transition to transactions. Okay, chat box, chat box. Let's let's. This is the next to last slide. Um, just quickly on these two, and then we'll get into the questions. We have a ton of questions, and I want to get into them. So, what do you think about chat box among small I, businesses? Uh, same issue. I see messaging having to surge first, and for messaging to surge, I see a convenient, easy back end being necessary. Once that happens, then chat bots have can be a real play. But I see messaging needed first. Yep, agreed. Facebook's going to work hard to get more businesses to adopt Messenger. They're probably going to do some pretty, uh, even if it's rudimentary analysis on, on frequently asked questions and uh, prompt businesses to answer those. Um, I do think there's a good opportunity for uh, chatbots beyond um, the social platforms. I think a chatbot on your website uh, where you can pull in some of these FAQs and answer them for people um, before potentially before directing them to a, a human customer service representative, it's a good spot to be looking at right now. But I'm qu I question the, the verb surge. I think that's a little bit um, optimistic. Okay, and then um, the final prediction before we get into the questions: uh, new Google My Business features this year. Maybe each of you could mention one that you think might happen beyond the existing set. <laughs> 
or yeah, none. I see, vacation, I, see, I see vacation rentals as being an obvious rollout. I mean, they're testing it now in Europe. I just think they're going to expand that. There's obvious low-hanging fruit with uh, VRBO and Airbnb, and I think they want some of that money. So. And I'll say some sort of tie-in with Google Analytics. Uh, so um, Mike has been very actively covering the Google Sites rollout, and um, you know the the lack of the lack of good data that that Google Sites provides about you know what content people are engaging with and that sort of thing. Um, so I think that the Google Analytics team will probably work a little more closely with the Google My Business team at. Uh, sort of presenting a, a more holistic picture of what's happening um, both on your website and on Google. Does that sound good to you, Mike? Or? And, yeah, and I would add one final thing to this is that if you look at the API development over the last three years, it's had a very tick-tock, almost mature development cycle. New version, minor update every six months. And in that, we are seeing sort of the future of Google acting as an adult where they're refining their products every six months. We just saw it with websites integrating with posts. Six months after introduction, they're now integrated. So I think you're going to see a lot of this sort of maturing, like David talked about, effectively creating new products by making, and an example of a new product that we see coming would be multi-location ability to do Google posts. Another new product I see likely is an API for Google Q&A, which is, you know, um, so those are possibles that I see short term. All right. Thank you. Thank you both for your time and your wisdom and perspective. And um, thanks, everybody, for, for all your questions and your engagement. Um, and we'll see you next time for another, another uh, LSA webinar. So thanks very much. Thanks, to thank everyone. You, Greg, thank you, Greg. Thank you, guys. Enjoyed it. All right. Bye-bye.